Welcome to the Numeracy in the Foundation phase lecture. So my name is Kelly Watkins and I work as an acting deputy head teacher in a wonderful elementary school in the Vale of Glamorgan, a wonderful elementary primary school. I completed my first ever teaching practice and I was where you all are now, almost 20 years ago, so a very long time. It makes me feel very old saying that out loud. And I've worked in a number of schools across London and South Wales and I've held loads of roles in that time and I've worked right across um, all year groups from nursery to year six. I'm currently working within a year one classroom and foundation phase leader and maths leader whilst also working as the deputy head role. So hopefully today I'm going to bring you lots of up-to-date information and research with regards to effective practice of teaching in the foundation phase and give you lots of places to go and look and continue the research yourself um, so that you may be able to find some resources that you will find beneficial for when you're on your teaching practice placements and when you're developing your own uh, professional development of knowledge um, within the area of numeracy in the foundation phase. Um, so if you look at research, this is long-standing research um, that has looked at actually it's really important to get mathematics development and understanding of skills right from the very, very early years that children are in the education because it actually has a bigger impact than just on maths. Um, it sh research shows that children who are strong in mathematics are also very strong within other areas of, comp of the curriculum, such as comprehension, reading, um, general educational progress and how quickly they pick up new skills and concepts, and also that they're actually stronger with the, those social skills because good mathematicians are also really good at problem solving and reflecting and, and looking at different ways of taking risks and managing those risks and re building resilience and so actually those are real good real life quality skills that we should try and get all children to achieve um, and those children who struggle in maths early on tend to, st tend to struggle in maths throughout their whole education career so, and journey so we really want to get it right from, from the onset. So if we're looking at what is numeracy so is the application of math, so it's those math skills that they learn to solve problems in the real world, in a real life context, in a real authentic context. And it's really important that we teach children those skills once we've taught them the maths grounding and skills that they can apply it in different situations. And the foundation phase is perfect for that because of the environment that the children learn in. But they have lots of ways to explore in the indoor and outdoor environment. They are trying to work and develop those skills, social skills of working collaboratively having a go at figuring things out, exploring the world around them. Um, and it's the perfect time really to encourage them to use their numeracy skills in, in a way that sometimes they don't, aren't always aware that they're doing it. Loads of fun, loads of mess, um, but it's really effective when you can get it right. So there are six key areas of early mathematics learning. Um, you can see the six areas there. So cardinality and counting looks at the value of numbers and the actual skill of counting and the development of that. Comparisons looking at the value of numbers, composition, so how different numbers are made up and different from what we would have learned as number bonds, for example. Patterns, so it's pattern with number sequences and steps, but also pattern in nature, pattern in art, pattern in the world we see around them. Shape and space, you're looking at your 2D and 3D shape work there um, and sorting in different ways. Um, geometry, so angles, turning, um, looking at um, sort of data as well within these and measures, so looking at time, capacity, weight, length. Uh, the NCTM is a fantastic research um, place for you to go to explore these early areas of maths in more detail. So the NCTM is the National Centre for Excellence in Teaching of Maths, so this is um, an English approach where they have developed really highly effective maths hubs across England and they work on the latest research of maths and the mastery of, of numeracy and math skills. And it's based upon excellent practice that you see in other countries such as Singapore and those countries where the children achieve really highly on the PISA maths tests. And so they've looked at what do they do well in those countries that are where maths is so strong and where children have excellent problem solving and have reasoning skills in maths and have really mastered the skills in maths. And all of the research and all of the resources have now been put together in this website, so it's an excellent place to, to look. Um, and if you look here, it gives you those six areas of early maths learning. You can look through each one, um, so depending on what you might be teaching on your placement, for example, or when you are a class teacher, if you're working with the, within the foundation phase, 
we can see here how each area is broken down into smaller steps um, and there's also a progression chart for each concept which talks you through the different steps and it's really useful to look at if you're working with children who haven't grasped a concept in a particular area how you can break it down and how you can go backwards as, um, into an earlier stage of their mathematical understanding to support that before moving forwards or for children who are grasping things quickly how you can move them on to the next step of their learning and stage of their learning. Um, within here there's also a fantastic podcast which you can see on the screen. The information here where is actually somebody who works for the NCTM is talking about the six areas and how you can um, embed that into effective day-to-day -day practice within the early years and so that's well worth watching. There's also on that website lots of professional development videos and material of um, teachers in the maths hub delivering lessons to children within the foundation phase and key stage two should you want to look at that for their um, inspiration and ideas as well. There's also a re report that came out this year by the Education Endowment Foundation um, again run by England which is why it's called Improving Maths in the Early Years in Key Stage 1 as Year 1 and 2 are in a separate key stage in England However, um, all of the principles of it apply completely to the foundation phase um, in Wales. There's an excellent document um, looking at how schools can improve um, and is very easy to read, very manageable to um, work through the different stages. So again, if I show you that document here, they have come up with five key recommendations of what schools should be doing in order to have effective mathematical and numeracy experience within their classroom. So recommendation one is looking at how, how do children learn maths and professional development, which you're currently receiving now on your course. Looking at time for children to learn maths and integrating it throughout the day so it's not just those separate maths lessons and activities, but how can we include it through story time, register time, snack time, um, getting it in whenever possible and just integrating it into their day, using manipulatives and representations. And so this is something that we've worked a lot on in our school and I'm going to be showing you a lot more of through today. Um, that's a really important one for children understanding numbers and, and making real life sense of quite abstract situations. Ensure teaching builds what children already know, so making sure that you have that real good assessment and understanding of what the children actually are working with, what are their smaller steps that they need to take to move that progression and that understanding on further and then looking at how you can use targeted support to help all children learn mathematics and if you look at these pages it then goes through each of those areas and gives recommendation on what you can do um, and with practice examples so again if that's something that you need support on whilst you're training or when you're in a classroom with your own class or again if you work in a school that are looking at improving maths um, within a specific area, this is a good resource to look at um, and look through. So I highly recommend you do that um, after this after this lecture. So these are the five key recommendations that we just looked at. Um, again, looking at everyday experiences. So it is well worth reading the page from the EEF on that and reflecting it if you've already been into schools and teaching practice or whilst you're in there, um, seeing how is that organised, how are teachers integrating it in in quite clever ways. So if we were to focus now on looking at the manipulatives and representations, so if you look here these are quite common resources that you might see in schools on teaching placement or if you have your own children as well you might have seen that they're learn using these resources in their own learning um, on school websites. So just take a moment, some you might be familiar with, some you may not, see how many you can name. Okay, and if we look here to go through those, so fingers, children, you often see children counted on their fingers, not ideal as you've only got 10 fingers, but that's how many children start. Below that you have the cues and air rods. So they're a set of rods that are um, from range of sizes, 10 different sizes and 10 different colours associated to those sizes for the children to recognise them. Initially children might um, match them up to the numbers 1 to 10. As children become more proficient in maths, those rods can then have different values. So they could be for counting in twos, could be for counting in tens, hundreds, thousands, fractions, decimals as children move through the schools. So they're quite a flexible resource. 
double-sided counters next to them, yellow one side, red the other, so that helps when children look at number bonds. So for example, three add two makes five. They can see that they have five yellow counters to begin with, turn two over to show that it was two red and three yellow, and that still makes five. So they can see that um, the value hasn't changed at all, but it can be made up in different ways. Dice important for children that are learning to subsidize. So seeing groups of numbers in one go without having to count them all one at a time. So we all know from looking at those dice, the patterns of the six, the five, and the three, the same with domino at the bottom. Children need to learn that. Lots of children will just count those one at a time until they become familiar with the patterns. Place value counters there, you can see hundreds, tens, and ones, and place value cards below that. So again, as children become proficient at counting and understanding the value of numbers and can associate them to objects, you then start to make that, um, that more um, step between the, uh, between the actual use of the manipulatives and representations into abstract by using the place value cards and counters. Um, 100 square, I'm sure lots of you remember those from your time at school, the Unifix cubes have been around for years at the top. And then there's Numicon, a fantastic, versatile, flexible resource. So if you're fortunate to have those in your teaching placements, they are fantastic and you'll see those in use shortly in this presentation. Below you have the coins and then at the bottom of the part part whole model. So that's where you see a whole number that's represented in different parts. So children need to be able to know that, for example, the five can be made up of the two and the three, the four and the one, zero and five. Three could be at the top there, the two at the bottom. It doesn't matter. That five number can, is still five. It's just made up in different ways. Really important when children start to add and subtract as they move through the school. Next to it is a bar model, which works in the same way as a part part whole model. So you have the whole number at the top and the different parts that the number is made up of. You can also change the bar model and the part part whole model into a different number of parts. So you could split it into three or four parts or even more with the bar model as you go further through the school. They're also really good, the bar model, at solving, problem solving when it comes to all four number operations, including division and multiplication. Across the bottom then, we have the number blocks, really valuable research in the foundation phase, and I'll show you that shortly. Number tracks and number lines. Bead strings, so you can get bead strings of 5, 10, 20 and 100. So again, helps children to physically see the value of numbers and really good for helping with one-to-one -one counting correspondence and subsidising. And tens frames again, really valuable resource in children being able to count numbers quickly and recognising that values and numbers are made up of tens and ones. So here your next task um, after this lecture, or now if you'd like to pause it, is to watch an episode of Number Blocks and just to have a look at any discussion points which may link to any of those early number concepts that we talked about earlier. So number blocks can be found on um, BBC iPlayer. They are split into different series. Each series looks at different elements of number. So for example, looking at each of the numbers individually and moving through to much more difficult concepts then within series four. On the NCTN website, there is actually um, a link that shows you, if I believe it's at the bottom here, um, the number blocks there, support material. So it actually links to um, what you may be teaching, which episode you can look at to save you looking through all of them. But they are fantastic and well worth looking at and using um, within your maths teaching. And the children absolutely adore them and really enjoy the episodes and don't even realise they're learning, which is brilliant. Um, so when you're then looking, we've looked at those different representations. Why are they so important? Why is it important to use those manipulatives? So Jerome Bruner, so this research was carried out years and years ago and is still um, effective now. And it is it is good practice in not just maths, but in, in lots of areas of how children learn. So it was looking at an idea or skill through objects so it's hands-on, so they can see it, they can feel it, they can move things around. Once they've understood that, they move on to pictorial representation. So that's a really important step that children don't become too over-reliant on the hands-on materials and equipment, but actually look at the way of using it to solve problems themselves through, through drawing um, those representations that they've been working with in a quicker way so that they can use it to solve problems. And then eventually they won't need to rely on those either, and they move through 
into um, the symbolic stage, which is abstract. And so when they see the symbol written in maths, such as a greater than or less than symbols, equal sign, they know exactly what it means. Um, and they don't need to use pictures or concrete representations, but you might find that the children need to use all three within sessions, or it might be if it's a particularly hard um, problem that they're trying to solve or a reasoning problem, they might need to go get something concrete to check their understanding, and, and we want the children to do that. And actually, it's good practice to have concrete materials on hand for all lessons right up into, um, into secondary school maths. And in Singapore, it's quite often for, for students to have something for them to use visually for as an aid even at um, degree level. So that's how important it is to gain that new knowledge and skill. So basically in maths, you're always working on these connections. So you might see CPA, which is the concrete pictorial and abstract written everywhere in maths. But actually, it's really important to add a fourth element there, which is the language of maths, and making sure that the children understand the language that they're using when they can use it, when they're developing, when they're explaining their mathematical thinking, because again, it helps them to make those connections to real life. As you can see there, very simply, down the foundation phase, you might have a way of saying it, then make it in an abstract way, they then write it. Again, they could draw it through pictures by drawing two objects in one colour, five in another, um, drawing counters, drawing the Numicon shapes, drawing circles, drawing crosses, a tally chart, anything that supports them to see what they've made there. So you can see there the, what the language would be. We can see there what the concrete experience would be using the counters in the tens frame, um, using different colour counters to represent the cell number two. And again, the picture would be a child drawing the counters within the tens frame, for example. We use the words with the children in school, write, draw, do, say, and to make it more accessible for them. So how do you ensure those good standards of numeracy in the foundation phase? So you have to have a good balance of the adult directed focused activities where you're teaching the children new skills. We also want children to be developing them independently through their own choosing and their own learning through child initiated. You need to have enhanced and continuous learning both in the indoor and outdoor environment for children to access at all time and I'll talk through those in a moment. Um, and also link up the activities, what do you observe the children enjoying, what are they playing with most and, and carefully put things into those areas to allow the children to practice the skills you've been teaching them in maths. But the children should be also have an opportunity to initiate choice and they direct their own learning throughout the whole of the foundation phase and it's quite common that that sometimes drops off the further they go through the foundation phase but actually lots of the research that you'll see today will show how important it is that children are actually doing that throughout the whole school school um, school journey. So here the child friendly approach, how do we make sure that the children are having these opportunities of writing, drawing, doing and saying within the foundation phase environment? So what's the difference between all of these areas? So your continuous provision are resources that the children will always have access to. So, for example, you would always have the Numicon accessible food strings, um, number lines for them to have, measuring equipment, always there so they can go and grab them whenever they want to. An enhanced provision may be if you've spent a week teaching um, money, you may then have in your role play area, you may then put in a till with coins for the children to do that with some Chrysler's and Christ labels. If you've been looking at um, measure and length, you may then encourage children to do activities of measuring specific things linked to a theme within your classroom environment. Your adult-led or focused activity is that that you have chosen as a teacher that you need the children to learn a specific skill and that's what they need to focus on and you will be delivering that whether it be one-to-one, -one, small groups, whole class activity. Child-led activity is when the children are going into your continuous provision areas, they're accessing equipment and they're choosing what how they want to play with it. So here, just showing you some examples of some adult-led activities that we've been doing the last few weeks within our classrooms in the school I work at. So you can see there, um, very practical, the children are looking at um, the value of numbers and building them and creating them in the early stages. And then they're looking at how to represent numbers in different ways. So you can see tens frames, numicon, children writing numbers and drawing. So when we come on to looking at reasoning and problem solving in the next few weeks, they'll have the skills to be able to do that.
You can see another example of it there. So whenever we work with the children, we encourage them to use the correct vocabulary. So these are two pupils that had to go explain in their, their learning. Still very early days, I think we we're having a good go um, when we were looking at making um, and partitioning numbers from 11 to 20 last week. Boys, can you tell me about your learning today? What have you been looking at? 17. Can you tell me how you've made 17? With a 10 and 7 ones. Can you tell me the different ways you made 17? So how have you made it? What's What have you done here? 10 and 7 ones with your part, part, whole module. What about your tens frame? How did you use that? 10 on one and 7 ones on the other. And you use counters to show it. Well done, boys. Good job. Well done. So you can see there that they're beginning to develop the language of understanding that the 17 is made up of a group of 10 and a group of 7 ones. Um, whereas a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, the children would have just been counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and not actually attributing um, a concept of understanding the groups and sets of numbers to those numbers. Um, again, you can see different ways here. So the photo on the right, we were looking at um, 13 a few weeks ago, and you can see that at that stage, the the child has just made 13 in lots of different ways with resources in front of them, starting to use a tens frame. Not quite understood the concept of tens and ones yet. But when you then look at the photo on the left, they've moved on from that and can actually see now a larger two-digit numbers. How, for example, with the base 10 cubes there, there's two groups of 10 and um, six ones. Again, outdoor learning, really important. So they've made groups of 10s there with the sticks, counting sticks, and then the six ones. Um, and it's just showing that it's always practical. And the children never work alone so that they can always get that language in and talk constantly. Here you have some slightly older children working on larger numbers, so they've understood and can see the value using Numicon or base 10 equipment or number rods. And they're now moving on to the place value counters. And you can see here in their books, part, 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 whole model, um, and also part, part, whole models, where they're looking at um, partitioning numbers in different ways. And if they're finding it tricky, they can then go back and use the manipulatives to support them. So you can see the Numicon in use there. So continuous mass provision, so these are the areas in your classroom you should always have set up so children can access different um, resources to help them with their maths learning, number lines, number squares, bead bars, bead strings, shape, or whichever you feel is applicable for the age of the children that you're with. Um, and your school should also have resources and documents in place to show how that would change from a nursery to a year two classroom, for example, and what's expected in that provisional areas. And there's some example, other examples there for you. Outdoor maths provision. So again, how can you help children to use their maths in different contexts? You can see a mud kitchen on the left. So lots of measuring there, weight, um, looking at the ingredients and mixing together. You can see in the middle one, we're looking at um, sticks, use of counting sticks, number pebbles, weighing, a larger weighing scale and balance scale that you might find in the indoor environment and using natural materials because the children will be used to using those in their play and how to bring that into real life context for them. And you can see there a number of different ways there as well of using bricks and using construction materials really effectively to develop maths provision. And your enhanced maths provision then, are if you've taught a skill and you want the children to practice that the following week, or you just want them to have experience with something new so you can assess where they are before you deliver something, you would then put different activities out that you encourage the children to participate in when they're not working with an adult on an adult-led activity. So these are some of the ones that we've used recently. Um, so the one here, Conkers have been quite good because we've obviously been looking at autumn. Um, and the one on the left you can see with the pipe cleaners and the children find the answer with the pneumocon shapes, what they found. We've also done that with um, with putting little beads on the pipe cleaners to look at that link between numbers and, and threading them onto the beads. Also a really good fine motor skill activity. Again, measuring tape. Um, the children love these mini pegs, so can they look at how the numbers represented in different way in the one-to-one -one counting correspondence? 
children having access to equipment when they ever they want to do maths you can see some scribing there on the whiteboard that a child's decided to do themselves whilst playing and again some more examples of um, some outdoor learning that we've got with the number signs and children having a go through their play of looking at comparing numbers using the numicon to support so cross-curricular real life experiences so once you've taught them those skills how do they then use it in different ways so you can see a shop there on the left, really popular, obviously, for things like numbers and counting and splitting things in half and sharing between friends, use of money. The middle one there, children have been measuring the distance that the cars have travelled down the ramp. Um, building, again, lots to do with measure, shape and space within those um, practical exploration activities. Estin has reduced this, um, produced this documentation, December 2017, so looking at effective practice of not just numeracy but also literacy in years one and two, well worth looking at to how you can get that balance of adult-led and child-led learning. There's a really good um, few pages there looking at number and measuring skills and how you can transfer mathematical skills to play and how you can also put them in the indoor and outdoor environments and how easy and simple it is to do that once you've taught the children the skills. So that's well worth reading and looking through and exploring also. There's also access to Hub Resources, the Foundation Phase Excellence Network. So I can show you here. Um, if you go on to Hub and access this network, there's lots of resources, but there's also some really valuable case studies. So if you're looking at certain areas that you want to improve on, have any foundation phase practice or whether you're within a school that are looking at action research pro project or any triad work being carried out, you can actually see there different types of case studies that are already being carried out that might support you. So looking at effective pedagogy in the foundation phase, child development, that's really good to look at um, and lots of them incorporate numeracy into that. In how you can use the environment well to support learning so that's really good for you to develop your own expertise and the schools that you're working in might also appreciate any guidance that you may find as well to share with anything that they might be developing developing on and again they've got some good videos in their resources section of children applying numeracy to real life contexts so planning, how do we record all this? How do you look at this? These are examples of some planning that we have in our school. Every school will be different. So again, links to the four purposes of the new curriculum um, and then looking at weekly planning of the six areas in the new curriculum for Wales, the areas of learning experiences. Um, we oversee the key objectives that are taken from the six areas over a week we split them between learn it's, which are those areas and enhanced provision that we want the skills that we want the children to practice, and we have that plans for that separately. And then we have adult led um, experiences that, where we actually sit and teach the children the specific skills. Um, then looking at what can we put in our provision to um, enhance the skills that we want them to learn. And so we set it out like this, and the children are aware of the different areas and the names to support them with their learning. Uh, we also use um, a tracking grid for the different areas. So this one's for reception year one and year two, where when we've taught them the number skills from the curriculum, we then want to see it across the curriculum and teachers can record and track the activity so they can see perhaps areas that children haven't had the opportunity to use in, in enhanced or in child-initiated activities. So they might need to put up more resources to support that. How do we assess the children of all these numeracy skills? Because you've got your adult-led learning, you've got your enhanced provision, you've got all the child-led learning that's going on around you. So we use the Seesaw app quite heavily. So we take photos of the children and upload them um, into adult-led activities if it's practical, because that's not recorded in the books. The children are also trained to take photographs of any learning that they want to show us. Um, that they've done within the environment, whether that be an enhanced activity or something that they've just thought of themselves uh, as a child-initiated activity. We also have floor books showing any new learning and also pupils' books. Again, different schools might use different techniques. We also use a lot of observation notes, so we've done a lot of these in the first few weeks um, where the children obviously had a long time, a period of home learning and we wanted to see how they were settling in. 
and how they were used in um, different areas. We also use observation notes if we are have an adult interacting with play in the environment with the children so we can see what skills they're using and develop them independently or skills we may need to teach them. Um, lots of the research I've talked about today and earlier in the presentation can also be found um, here in these two references should you want to research further in your own time. So I hope you found that beneficial. Um, I know there's a lot of information in there, um, but any questions then I'm sure your lecturers will be able to pass those on and those queries. Um, but it's been a pleasure doing this for you. I hope you found it useful and good luck with your teaching careers.